Hi everyone, welcome back to the Astro Backyard. My name is Trevor Jones and in this video we're going to be photographing the planet Saturn. Planetary astrophotography is a completely different animal than the type of astrophotography I normally do on this channel, which is deep sky. Those of you that have been watching this channel for a long time have been asking for me to shoot planets for a long time now, and I'm finally gonna do it. Both deep sky and planetary astrophotography involve telescopes, long focal lengths, and tracking mounts, uh, but it's a little bit different for planetary astrophotography. It's almost like you're taking videos as opposed to a long exposure image. So no five minute exposures of dim, faint nebulae or galaxies, like half a second shots, almost a video rate of a planet because they're so bright. To photograph planets, you need aperture. So the Edge HD 11, 11 inches of aperture, it has a lot of light gathering power, which is great to get those finer details on the surface of the planet. A lot of you have been asking for me to photograph planets on this channel for a long time and tonight's the night, but I have to be totally honest with you. I have no idea what I'm doing. The last time I took a photo of a planet was with this beauty right here back in 2012. It was through the eyepiece of my Dobsonian telescope, untracked, and it was a wobbly mess. Tonight, however, I have a more suitable system for planetary astrophotography and I even got a few tips from a friend. So Dylan, first of all, thanks for, you know, sorry I woke you up this morning at uh, 7.04. It's, uh, you know, it's after dinner here in Canada. But I had some questions. I really need your help in terms of planetary astrophotography. I've seen your planetary images and I know you've done videos about how to capture the planets before. So I was hoping you could give me three tips for planetary photography, even if they're really general, to help kind of speed up my progress here, starting out really as a beginner in planetary astrophotography. Sure, man. Look, uh, I've seen that you've got this uh, great new telescope, the Celestron 11 inch Edge HD, and I have that same telescope out here tonight. Um, now the, the three uh, sort of main areas I would hit on are size, focus and clarity. Now size is easy, right? You want to make the planet as big as possible on the sensor. You've got the big telescope already, so that's one thing ticked off that list. Uh, however, there are a few things we can do uh, beyond that, and that is waiting for opposition. If the planets are at opposition, they're going to be bigger in the sky than they are during any other time of the year. And you don't need an app or anything to tell you if uh, they're at opposition. It's really easy. If the sun's going down in the west, then the planets are coming up in the east. And so if that happens at the same time, you're at opposition. Obviously, you want to wait for that planet to get up as close to the zenith as possible. So that's up nice and high, you're not shooting through a lot of atmosphere. That works really well. And of course, uh, throwing in a Barlow or some sort of magnifier into the image trade mix. Now that'll make sure that the planet is as big as possible. You want that size. The next thing, of course, is focus. Now, focus with planets is a little bit trickier than deep sky. You can't rely on the half flux radius. Badenov masks are probably the way to go. And I've found that probably the simplest way to focus on a planet. You can obviously use surface details if you're shooting a planet like Jupiter or something with a surface detail to just eyeball it but button of masks always work really well for me. I also try to focus on Jupiter's moons or Saturn's moons mm. because that can help get that button of spike nice and symmetrical. Now the uh, third point that I'd like to hit on is clarity. To get the most clarity out of your planetary images, you wanna be using a mono camera, not a one-shot color camera. Mono has better quantum efficiency and you're getting the signal on every single pixel rather than distributing that across the RGB matrix. So they're my, uh, they're my points. Oh, the other thing for clarity, of course, is seeing. You need good weather and you need yeah. it to be nice and clear.
You might have noticed that I have an eyepiece at the back of the telescope, something you don't see a lot on this channel. So hopefully I'll get some nice views of these planets as well as some photos. I've downloaded a new software to use to capture these images of planets called Fire Capture. That seems to be the choice of everyone that I know that's taking really great planetary images. Damien Peach, Dylan O'Donnell, Corey Schmitz, all these guys are using fire capture, so I figured I couldn't go wrong there. I'm using one of my guide cameras as a camera to photograph these planets, the ZWO ASI 290mm Mini. It's actually a great planetary camera. I've never used it that way, but uh, I'm pretty excited to see what it can do. Astrophotographers that take pictures of planets do something that's called lucky imaging, which is basically shooting off hundreds and thousands of short exposure images and then selecting the best ones out of that group and stacking them together. That's because there's a lot of turbulence in the air and when you're looking at such long focal lengths, you're, you'll see it almost looks like you're looking through water. Just our atmosphere is getting in the way between our telescope and the planet. Through lucky imaging, you can select just those best moments of the best transparency and stack all those together. It's a beautiful thing. So not only is the image acquisition stage of planetary astrophotography different than deep sky, but also the post-processing as well. I'm going to use a program called Auto Stacker, which again is just the one that I see everyone using and getting great results with. So Jupiter and Saturn both come up together, which is nice, but it's not until about 11 p.m. and it's 9.30 right now. So I've got some time to kill. I'm gonna run a deep sky setup in the background, of course, but I'm really excited to finally use the Celestron Edge HD for some planetary astrophotography on this channel. Another way that planetary astrophotography is a bit different, it's a little less demanding on the tracking accuracy. Because if you think about it, if you're stacking just the best frames and they're a half a second or shorter each, you don't need that tracking to be perfect for five minutes straight the way you do for deep sky. Again, I really don't know what I'm doing here, but I think I can just put the camera right on the back here. I'm going to have to get the spacing right and I'm sure there's going to be a bit of back and forth. I know most people like to use a Barlow here too. I have a Barlow eyepiece, but it's a two inch and I don't think I could thread it on here anywhere. So it looks like we're shooting at native 2800 millimeter. That should be pretty good. How big is Saturn going to be, I wonder? It's almost exactly midnight. It's 1159 and you can see Jupiter and Saturn how low they are right now. So it's gonna be another half hour or so before I can actually look at them through the telescope and actually take some pictures. I can see them, they're coming up. I think it's gonna be one of those nights. I've already seen two meteorites streak across the sky. I've looked at the Ring Nebula through the eyepiece of the Edge HD 11 and the Esprit 150 and the RA are capturing images of M17, the Omega Nebula as we speak. So I'm just waiting for Jupiter and Saturn to get a little bit higher. In the last video, someone mentioned that just because I said that I'll be using this TV for, you know, education and astrophotography to share ideas with you, but they saw the Xbox there, so they assumed I'd be playing that. What do you take me for? Say good night. Who wants some? see if I can find it here. I see something bright. Oh my god. Do you see that? That is Jupiter. So I just need to change the settings. Those are Jupiter's moons you're looking at there. And that's the planet Jupiter. Those are all Jupiter's moons that are orbiting the planet. Knock down the gain. And you can see the turbulence in the air. Bumping this down, I'm starting to see the cloud bands. So why don't I just try focusing slightly? See if that does any better. 
I can't help but think like, could I be in more focus? Should I play with it a little more? Should I start recording now? Is this as best as it gonna get? Like, it never ends. I'm never happy with the amount of focus and it's like, it's so subtle. Dylan mentioned using a Batnoff mask, but I don't have an 11 inch Batnoff mask for this giant SET. So maybe I'll have to look into getting one of those. So focus has been challenging. It's recording right now in uh, AVI file format. The default for whatever reason in Fire Capture is a .sir file. Double click it, expecting to see a video and it's uh, Windows would you know, like you to decide how you would like to open this file. But I'm shooting an AVI now just because that's a video file that I can open and look at and I know I've actually captured something. So all the learning curve that's uh, involved in planetary imaging. Saturn's up now a little bit lower, so I'll probably hop over to that soon. You know, based on my limited experience uh, shooting planets years ago, uh, it was the same sort of thing. It was, you know, taking a video and it looks very fuzzy and then magically through the stacking and the wavelets, you get this sharp image of the planet. So I'm really banking on that being the case tonight because uh, the video footage looks very fuzzy. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but even at this stage, it's it's a win for me. Just to be able to get to this stage uh, is a really great feeling. What you're looking at is a live view of the planet Saturn in the night sky. If you've never seen Saturn through a telescope before, it's, you know, a bucket list life checklist item an unbelievable reality of what's actually out there. This incredible planet with its icy rings is in the night sky and a part of our solar system. 